Ah, changing the road signs. Now, I'm sure you'll agree, I'm absolutely convinced you'll agree, this is the big one. And it's the big one for at least three reasons. First of all, it's going to cost about a billion pounds. And the question isn't, can we afford to? The question is, can we afford not to? And I'll come back to this question in a few moments. Secondly, only the government can change the road signs. You might pop out at night with a couple of tins of paint and change one or two of your local signs. All that will happen is you'll probably get arrested for criminal damage. Thirdly, it's going to have a massive, very beneficial knock-on effect right through the whole country, right through the educational system. It's going to do our children the world of good with our education. Now, changing the road signs isn't just about changing the road signs. It's changing the way people think. You might say changing people's psyche. First of all, it's going to have massive publicity. Everybody in the country will be talking about it. It'll be in all the media. It'll be everywhere. This will make people much more aware of the metric system. It'll also make people much more aware of how isolated the United Kingdom is in the rest of the world and the United States, of course, as this map clearly shows. But here's the great thing, isn't it? The more publicity, the more awareness people will have of metric units and the more people will realise we live in an entirely metric world. The good old fashioned medieval units are no longer relevant to today's world. There'll be lots of discussion going on. Questions such as how many metres are there in a kilometre? And what does kilo mean anyway? Take the width limit that you often see on narrow roads of six foot six for large vehicles. How much is six foot six in metres? How high are bridges in metres? There'll be huge programmes of education in schools and for young drivers. Speedometers will very quickly become much simpler. There'll be no need for the miles per hour scales. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll understand how important these single scales are as number lines to help our children with their number bonds. And of course, for the first time, everybody will be able to measure a kilometre in this country. So we can be able to take a, a measurement from a map in kilometres and get in the car and drive it. Wow! And the introduction of kilometres will mean, of course, the demise of miles. So you'll never have the situation where you're discussing, for example, how far is it from the sun to the earth? Do you say it's 93 million miles or do you say it's 150 million kilometres? Now, everybody else in the world, of course, would automatically give it in kilometres. But our science teachers, our children have to decide. Are we talking miles? Are we talking kilometres? Oh, such a waste of time. Get rid of the miles, go kilometres, no problem. Maths and science topics involving any form of measurement will suddenly become much more relevant in the outside world. Children will see what they're learning at school being supported by the metric signs all around them, rather than being undermined by the medieval signs they see at present. Science teachers and university lecturers will jump for joy. The change will also reinforce children's learning of the decimal number system, which they use every day, but many do not feel confident with. This will remove one huge obstacle to our children's learning. The change will bring us in line with every other country in the world, except, of course, the United States. And the USA will then be the only country in the world still using these medieval units. Now, that brings us, of course, to the question of whether we can afford the billion pounds necessary to change the road signs. Now, this is very interesting because we hear the government telling us something's going to cost millions of pounds, something else is going to cost billions of pounds. And when it comes to the national debt, we're talking trillions of pounds. We become so blasé about these numbers that they become meaningless in the end. So let's try and put a billion pounds into perspective. Now, if we spread the billion pounds over five years, let's say, it works out at just three pounds per person per year in the UK. And we all know you can't buy very much these days for three pounds. It's a very insignificant amount of money. Now, I have a quote here from the Prime Minister, Mr David Cameron himself, 
On the 11th of February 2014, in reply to a question regarding flood defences, he said, We are a wealthy country with a growing economy, with public finances that are increasingly coming under control. And he should know. Now, once we have changed the road signs, there won't be any ongoing maintenance costs other than that normally associated with maintaining the road signs. So it's definitely a one-off cost. When we hear the government say they are putting so much money into the NHS, into social care, into education and so on, often these are repeated costs year on year, ongoing well into the future. That just isn't the case with changing the road signs. Now if you search around on the internet and other sources, you can easily find many other projects in which the government are involved that cost far more than a billion pounds. A very good example, of course, is one that's a red-hot potato at the moment, the HS2 rail link. The anticipated cost of this currently is around £50 billion. And of course, in the future, there will be considerable costs in maintaining this facility. Now, for just 2% of the cost of the HS2, we could change the road signs, just 2%. Once you're aware of this, you'll soon find other examples of your own. Another way to look at this is to ask the question, what's the cost of not changing the road signs? The recent pro bono economics report that has a very long and fancy title estimates that some £20 billion is being lost to the UK economy each year due to poor levels of numeracy. And again, for just 5% of this annual cost, we can change the road signs to metric. It really is a no-brainer. The recent YouGov online report found that 36% of the UK adult population felt held back by poor maths. So what can you do to help get the road signs changed? Well, as this is a matter for government, it's MPs and the Department for Transport that we need to contact. These people need to feel the pressure of their citizens' desire to change the signs. On the Dr Metric website, you'll find another video entitled How to Contact Your MP, and it deals with this very issue, of course. I've also put an e-petition asking the government to change the road signs on the government's e-petition website. And there is a, yet another video which shows you how to go about doing that. So please follow up on the changing of the road signs to metric and add your weight to this ever-growing campaign.